Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA18C Hornet. It is January 2021. We've had functionality added to our ALE47 dispensing countermeasure system and we now have functionality of the ASPJ, the Airborne Self-Protection Jammer. Please use this video in conjunction with the original countermeasure video that we did about two years ago which will contain the bulk of the material. Today we're just looking at the extra features. First of all let's get rid of our stick, let's get rid of our pilot. This panel down here let's remind ourselves of the function. We've got the control of the ALE 47 dispenser here. It can be off or it can be on or in the up position it can be bypassed. In the bypass position it means that we can only use the countermeasures manually. So we're going to have it on the on position for today. For the ASPJ we have this knob here. We can have it off or we can have it energized in standby or we can have a built-in test or as currently we can have it in receive mode where it receives information and displays an indication but does not actually jam and then xmit where it will receive information process that information and transmit first let's look at the ALE 47 in our left DDI EW electronic warfare here we have the ALE 47 dispenser, the ALR 67 RWR and the ASPJ jammer which are all linked together. A quick reminder of the ALE 47, click on it here, we can see we currently have 60 chaff, 30 flare and neither of the other types. Our mode is currently standby, we can change the mode from standby to manual activation, semi-automatic activation, automatic activation semi-automatic and automatic activation are what's just been added note next to the mode type we have a number that represents the current selected countermeasures program if we wanted to change that we click step and we have several programs that we can cycle through if we want to look at the program that we've got selected press arm and we can see program 2 consists of that amount of chaff and flare that are being sent to those details there return out of there. A reminder of how we use this system if we go back to manual mode to start with and we press dispense switch forward then we will start firing program 2 as selected. With a new feature with semi-automatic mode here when the RWR detects a threat of a hostile spiking us having a radar lock on us then the ALE 47 will first of all advise us to start the countermeasure system manually by pressing dispense switch forward. It will also change the type of program so it might not necessarily use program 2 even though we've got it selected. It will choose its own program based on the threat detected by the RWR. If we had it in automatic mode very similar. It will choose its own program to suit the threat. This time it will automatically begin the countermeasure program. Be careful, this can be very wasteful. So let's put ourselves in a live fire situation and see it in action. RC is now on my nose as you can see in an F-18. In this situation my jammer is set to receive only, my ALE 47 is set on. Let's go and have a look at our setup again. So program 4 with semi-automatic. RC please get a single target track on me so my RWR can detect it and advise accordingly. You can see I'm now being locked, which we can see by the uh, RWR and is telling us to dispense. So I'm going to press the uh, dispense forward and it's going to fire the program. Note it's firing what it's decided the appropriate program is, so that's chaff only and no flare. And let's rerun the scenario. This time we're going to be in fully automatic and um, program 3. Okay, STT when you're ready, RC. Oh, rush you. This time, as you can see, it's dispensing. It's not telling me to dispense, it's just dispensing on its own. Okay, thank you, RC. Next, let's look at the jammer. So, ECM to XMIT, RC, if you would kindly lock me up. Now, it won't do anything until it detects that we're being spiked or locked, tracked. So, see what happens. You can see we're XMIT there. See what happens when RC locks me up. Okay, is now locking me. You can see that we are receiving and we are transmitting. And also, I'm just going to pause it to make it easier to speak. When we transmit with the ECM, it will stop my search and track radar from working. So when it's a jammer on here, the radar stops. Now I'll see if you unlock me, please. I can show you that the uh, my radar will start 
searching again once the jammer is not transmitting. There's always okay. a few seconds delay. And lock me up again, please. Okay. Okay. And in this case, I decided, no, I want to overrule the jammer and I want to use my search radar, track radar, so I'm going to go to receive and now I can use my radar again. Now, the last scenario, RC is in XMIT with his jammer. Watch what happens when we try and lock him up. So there he is, set my TDC, I'm going to try and lock him now. What's happened, rather than him appearing in the usual place, his hafu has now been put up here in what we call the dugout. It's been put up there because we don't actually know his range. Because his jammer is transmitting, we can't determine his range. We can prove that because up here, he's at 99.9 .9 miles range. It means we don't know how far away he is. We also can tell he's jamming because he's got a J next to ha his hafu. Now, we can override this. If we get close enough, the power of our attack radar will overrule his jammer. It's called burning through the jam. Let's see that in progress. So just stay as you are, RC. The point at which we burn through will depend on our type of radar and his type of jammer and possibly other factors. I've got a full video testing all of the aircraft against each other. But it's going to be about 20 to 30 miles. Oh, and you can see we're burnt through there. Just pause it again. You can see he's no longer in the dugout up here because we know his range, which is 25 miles, and his jammer will have little or no effect as we get closer. That's the update to the ASPJ and the ALE 47 Jan 2021. I hope that was useful and see you later.